Hello all YouTubers, I'm the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this tropical discussion for September 1st, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest forecast and best forecast from the Weather Dude, then please, every single one of you that is not subscribed, please click the subscribe and the ring and the notification bell so you guys stay up to date with the latest the Weather Dude content. And also, please watch the whole video. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for a thousand subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. And this is taking the next step towards monetization. So please watch the whole video. It really does help out my channel a lot. And also, please give this video a like and share this with your friends. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. Also, I want to announce that I just got the community tab. Thank you guys very much since we had a thousand subscribers and exactly a week later I now have the community tab so I'll be making like weather posts there and maybe asking like you guys weather poll questions so please consider subscribing again and also checking out the community tab to view my latest post and without further ado let's get started. Alright so we have well we did talk about my last video we talked about these two tropical systems over here obviously um, this one is 99L has now become Tropical Storm Nana hopefully I'll be able to further discuss that another day and then we have tropical depression 15 up there uh, just off the coast of north carolina but what we're focusing on today is going to be more tropical waves developing and a potential tropical storm forming off the coast of africa where we kind of we took a look at the two storms closer to us yesterday and now today we're going to be taking a look at the two systems off the coast of africa so these tropical waves could become uh, potential tropical storms here over the next few days Starting with this one here, um, none of these, as I latest I checked, none of these have been deemed invest. Um, but this first one here does that's emerge that's forecast to emerge off the coast of Africa. The second one behind the first one um, is going to emerge off the coast of Africa in about a day or so, and we could even see merge with another disturbance 200 miles southeast of the Cabo Verde Islands. All right, and we could see some development of this system. It could be a tropical depression by the weekend, or maybe even a tropical storm by the weekend as it moves over the Atlantic. But notice. Uh, formation chances of the next two days are zero. So if it does form, it's going to form within the next three, four, five days or so. Um, and then we have the system here. This is a small low pressure that has formed. All right, um, near the um, it's between the Windward Islands and the Cape Verde Islands. Uh, be, and but upper level winds should be light. So some lighter shear, maybe some slow development of the system. Chances for formation next five days are twenty percent. So these are two separate entities here. One is currently located right on the African coastline, and one. Uh, is located between the Cabo Verde Islands and the Leeward and Windward Islands. So, looking on the satellite here, uh, let me slow down a little bit. I haven't speed up too much. All right, let's slow down the satellite loop a little bit so you guys can see. So, the first system is kind of located back here. A lot of convection looks very powerful. And these, and this is where these tropical waves can form into these potential tropical storms here. Um, and in our second system, the center of that system is actually located right about here. All right. Now, we also do have... Again, a tropical wave here as well. This could be a separate one. This could be this uh, this area could actually be the uh, area that this system here can merge with to maybe form something else. Because as you look at the National Hurricane Center, the low spot as of two o'clock this afternoon, as about two hours ago, is located right between thirty-five and forty west. All right, so thirty-five and forty west is right about here. So that's this system they're talking about. It looks like it's starting to get a little leftward spin, some counterclockwise spin. So that's why um, they think that we um, have some counterclockwise rotation that low has formed. Here is Chalk Storm Nana, and there is TD-15. Kind of looks like it's getting sheared off up there. All right. But again, this, this tropical wave here, very, uh, very long, big tropical wave. We've got another one coming off the coast of Africa. Again, these could form into tropical entities later on. All right, so let's look at now the visible satellite imagery. Obviously, we're now transitioning. Uh, I mean, we have the daytime visible imagery over here, and then you can see the line coming across your screen because now we're transferring towards a nighttime one, so it may look a little faded now, okay? But that's because a visible satellite is transforming because it's like this kind of like the space view again. So you can really actually see better on the visible satellite how we're starting to see a leftward hook. If you look in this general area, you can kind of see the storms are starting to try to rotate. So I think this, the second one's trying to get its act together. Uh, this one's coming off of Africa has a lot more convection and it's a lot it's larger. So um, I think that's why National Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on that one. As well, but you can see we're starting to see a lot of areas of rotation. So kinky areas of rotation that we have to keep our eyes on. And these are several tropical waves here coming off the coast of Africa. So looking at our sea surface temperature anomalies. So for the for the first storm, it's actually sitting in some warmer water right now. 
All right, slightly above average waters, and it will be moving. It will be chugging on. Um, it may not move at all. Actually, it will be stalling out because um, this one won't be moving west because, again, look at the National Hurricane Center with the yellow disturbance. Notice how in five days, it's just sitting in the same exact location. So it may it may actually not move really much at all. Now, the second system, when it, as soon as it moves over coast of Africa, some slightly below average waters, but it may have some average to so slightly above average waters to contend with, which is good for the storm system development maybe over the next few days. Because if you look, again, National Hurricane Center, this is where the storm could be over the next five days, anywhere in an orange zone here. All right, just south and west of the Cabo Verde Islands. Now, the actual sea surface temperatures, the first system, the one that has a lower chance of development, is sitting in some waters of about lower 80s, maybe like 81, 82. Um, and then the coast of, and the second one that could merge off the coast of Africa, even with some below average water, still water temperatures will be above 81 degrees, which is good for development. Tracking in this uh, sort of track here. So still, as long as the waters are above 80, wind shear is low, dry air is low, um, this, and we have some good upper ocean heat content, um, these, both of these two winds could develop into some tropical storms potentially. So we're going to be taking a look now at some of the modeling. Now, usually when this systems, when these systems are this early in the development phase where they're just tropical waves, they might be just identified by the National Hurricane Center. Usually the models won't pick up on them too much, right? Models really won't have them developing too much. You might have to give the models time to uh, process this. But the GFS actually does think that something could come uh, of either of these tropical systems, tropical waves, or maybe both of them. Some could come out here. So again, here's the first system. As you can see, like the National Hurricane, National Hurricane Center said, it is kind of stalling. Not much is happening with it. Um, and then we do have some rotation out in here. All right, again, you can see this one's just meandering. And then we got something else behind that, some heavier rain uh, coming off the coast of Africa. And then maybe another low merges. Look at the 1,000 millibars of pressure. Got some good rain on the northeast side. Then something else might merge. Uh, and this is the 7th of September at 2 o'clock in the morning, according to the GFS model. Now, like I said, as always, you'll see these storms a lot better on the cyclonic vorticity signature. But still, look at this. Look at the afternoon on, on uh, next Monday here on the 7th. Here's your, here's your first low. Now that low that you see right there, the one that says 1002, that one is probably, this is probably the one right here all right, that they're talking about. That's probably where it's going to end up being over the next few days. Now this one hasn't been updated, or I should say identified by the Hurricane Center yet. This is something else that the GFS model might predict to come off of Africa over the next day, five, six, seven days. Um, and then the one that comes off of Africa later on, they might think that moves north, but the second system here, that, that's the third system. The second system could be moving in a westerly direction towards the Caribbean. So this is definitely something to keep our eyes on. Several of these tropical waves, you can just see them merging off the coast of Africa here. And and since it's all, actually, well, it's September. Whew. Happy first day of September, you guys. I just, I, I keep thinking it's August in my mind. Um, but some of these um, wave, tropical waves could develop. Again, it's September, so the conditions are usually good for development, and we definitely have to watch out. Uh, for some potential not rapid development but good intensification with these tropical waves it can certainly happen so the first system as you can as i told you before it's kind of sitting there it's kind of meandering not doing too much all right but then something else comes up and look at this wow okay if you if you look really closely you see you see the low here but if you look really closely you see some green and even some yellow and orange meaning maybe winds could get above 60 miles an hour maybe a strong tropical storm Potentially, all right, all right. This is again 2 a.m. on Monday, and we can see this game. We can see this game strong tropical storm status, maybe maintaining a tropical storm status as it heads towards Caribbean. Obviously, they don't really know. That's why they weaken the strength farther up in time because now we're all the way to September 12th, and the GFS model really doesn't know what's going on by then. But definitely something to look out for. Maybe gaining some strength here. Maybe some winds of 60 miles an hour plus. Um, that's I believe that would be this system right here again. The one that the National Hurricane Center is really keeping its eye on um, coming off the coast guard because that's the one they're talking about. Now, here's a cyclone vorticity signature, and you'll be able to see, I'll be able to pinpoint where the storms are for you. So, this system, the first system, the, the yellow one by the National Hurricane Center, and again, I just want to make sure you guys know which ones I'm talking about here. So, in this case, I'm talking about this one right here. So, they have it meandering towards the south. Okay, let me go to here. They have it meandering towards the south and then colliding with something else. That could be the second system that comes off the coast of Africa and really gaining some decent rotation, some counterclockwise spin here, all right? Then it helps fuel energy into the other one, 
And here's where it really gains some strength. On the top of the Cyclonovorticity signature scale, you can see it right there. Lavenders and whites all the way at the top. All right, and then we got a nice decently sized gale forming up here um, in the uh, subtropics. So that's pretty interesting as well. Then something else, look at this. You see good counterclockwise rotation. got a huge banding features. So that could be something else. This could be three separate tropical systems or maybe two because the first one may weaken. Then maybe form to collide into something else and fire back up again. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the same three maps I just showed you, except we're going to take a look at the gem model now. Okay, and as you can see, we have the gem model here, and again, low meander towards the south. Then the other system, the orange one by the National Hurricane Center, comes off the coast of Africa. Again, I wouldn't name these by their invest name, but as of now, as of 4 o'clock, these have not been named invest yet. But look at this. A decent low pressure, a decently strong tropical storm emerges, okay, over the first couple or a few days of September, and really gets, gets some strength for this early on in time, dropping below 1,000 millibars of pressure, we can you can see getting 50, 60 plus mile an hour winds. All right. Then it kind of just sits there. Maybe the high tries to drag it up. Now that the pressure drops below 990 millibars. And then something else forms behind that. So the first couple days, the first, I'd say, week, maybe two weeks of September, could potentially be very active. Um, the gem model definitely is starting to agree with the GFS model here. So taking a look at the wind speeds, when it first emerges off of Africa, as soon as it emerges off of Africa, we see tropical storm force winds 40, 45 miles an hour already taking place. This is just left Africa, all right? Then it moves north, maintaining a tropical storm status. Then pressure drops below 1,000 millibars. Our winds get a little stronger, maybe 50 plus miles per hour. But it really doesn't gain its strength until it starts moving farther north, actually. And we really see those 60, 65 mile per hour winds start taking place. Like I said, now we're starting to head, you know, towards September 9th, 10th. And who knows what could happen then. Then the winds get close to 70, 75 miles an hour over the next 10 days. And then you have, all right, you have your next low pressure system forming, but they're not quite certain on the wind speed on that one yet. But again, this data this data could change. Now looking at the cyclonic vorticity signature, all right, again, here's what here's the first one that emerges. All right, you can see uh, the, here you can see right there you got your banding features dragging along behind it. All right. Then moves on to the west and it really gains some strength. Kind of sits there, kind of meanders and gets shot up northbound right here. Again, got your banding features and a whole nother mess of energy tries to come off of Africa and again it's because we're really starting to see we're really starting to see some of that, that convection kind of light up here all right kind of light up the map so here's one system then we may have another system second one and then third one tailing close behind that or they could be connected or like conjoined all right and then maybe like broken up eventually all right so sometimes the two systems kind of break apart into two separate systems because they're stuck together so Look at the look at the another look at the cyclone of vorticity signature. You won't be able to see Africa, but on the right side of your screen, you can see the Cabo Verde Islands. So first of all, though, here is tropical pressure at 15. There is tropical storm Nana, just to evaluate or kind of tell you guys where those two are. Um, but again, some decent waves of energy. Here's the first one by the National Hurricane Center. That orange area that you see right there. It's kind of looks like it's getting a circular motion. That's what you want to see, and that's indicated by the first one right there. Now, if we move on to the other one. The other system hasn't left Africa yet, so it's still in Africa, so you might not be able to see it. But a piece of it is just south of the Cabo Verde Islands, and we're talking about this system right here. So this could be a very dangerous situation for the Cabo Verde Islands getting storm after storm, tropical wave after tropical wave, and maybe even the Caribbean Islands further on down the road, depending on where these track. So here's the first system. Again, a slightly weaker one sitting right here. Uh, and then you got another wave here that could potentially be connected to that, maybe, a, some, maybe something else. Then you have your second tropical system indicated by the National Hurricane Center over there by Africa. As you can see, these storms are doing a pretty good job of avoiding the dry air. As you can see, we had dry air. I mean, we got drier to the north. We got drier somewhere to the south. But in the middle, it's right around that, I'd say, anywhere between 15 degrees north latitude and 5 degrees north latitude. We just have this sweet spot where there's really not much dry air and these systems are trying to develop. They're getting their moisture. All right, and if they keep a southerly track and not track northbound into the dry air, all right, if they stay south enough, like Nana, like Tropical Storm Nana has, then they won't run, it, run in the dry air, and now they just got to focus on the winds here because at this point, these storms are getting some pretty warm water. All right, but now we're, we've looked at the dry air. It doesn't look like there's too much dry air unless they move their way north, unless we get a high pressure, a steering flow, and they can maybe suck those storms right into the dry air, kind of like entices them, and then once they run into the dry air, they kind of run out of energy. 
All right, but there are some pockets within the dry air that have some some less dry air amounts. And like I said, we got September, October, November to go. So we have three whole months still, all right? Now, in terms of activity coming off of Africa, I say we have another month or so because once we start to get towards October, of uh, October, November, kind of like start to act like May and June, all right? In the sense where the activity kind of starts forming close to the United States once again, um, once we head towards October, November. But for the month of September, they can form anywhere, all right? Like I said, we got a system developing off the coast of the Mid-Atlantic in the southeast, we got one in the Caribbean, and we have a couple tropical waves making their way off the coast of Africa, which I'm talking to you guys about right now. So, looking at the wind shear, again, Nana, chocolate depression 15 right there, and then the wind shear doesn't look too bad. We see some blues and greens on the map, so 10 to 20 knots, which is always manageable. These storms can put up with about, depending on the system, how large it is, usually a system can put up with about 10, 20, maybe even 22 knots a shear. Once you get above... 25 30 and above that's when the system may not be able to may not be able to handle it now also it, sometimes it depends on the strength of the storm as well if it's a category four it, it might be able to put up with it a little bit it could build some outflow boundaries kind of like protect itself but if it's just a little tropical wave and it runs at like 40 knots of shear eh, it's not gonna have the it's not gonna have the best time right um, it might start weakening but again the size of the storm also does matter again smaller scale systems smaller uh, size ones can form very quickly when the conditions are right, but when conditions are bad, then they kind of fall apart quickly. A larger system forms a little slower, but also can protect itself a little bit. All right, so looking at the 26 and a half degree isotherm, if you watched my 20 hurricane season discussions that I did, wow, I can't believe it's 20. Um, I did take a look, show you guys this map a lot. As you can see, a lot of the 26 and a half degree isotherms out towards Africa, we usually see a good amount, maybe 50, 75 meters, and that means that 150 to 200 feet below sea level, we're still seeing some warm water to support those tropical systems. Um, and honestly, colors like the red over in the Caribbean, meaning those those warm upper ocean heat content can go maybe three, four, maybe even three, four, five hundred feet below the ocean surface. And the further down the table they get, the further below the surface those warm waters are able to get, the better. Now, take a look at the tropical cyclone heat potential. There's not too much out here off the coast of Africa. But once they make their way a little bit closer towards the Caribbean, making their way a little bit farther to the west, they start to pick up their energy. That's why when a storm comes off the coast of Africa, you don't see it developing right away, right? There's always a little bit of drier by Africa. The tropical cyclone heat isn't too great. Our, our ocean temperatures are pretty good, right? We got some decently warm ocean water temperatures. So some of the ensemble, as we wrap up our last few maps here, kind of going through the tropical cyclone ensemble probabilities, or like the TC Genesis probabilities. So the NCP, the FNMOC, and the GEM model are predicting with the first system maybe about a 40, 30 to 40% chance, but with the second system maybe potentially a 50% chance of tropical cyclone genesis. Now, how about the NCP, some of the ensembles? As you can see, the first system, they give about a 50 to 60% chance, kind of meandering in like a similar area, maybe moving a little bit farther west, but kind of meandering. Then the second system, the second system, they give a 60 to 70% chance, and have them moving north, kind of like the gem model was saying, and then bend towards the west a little bit, then maybe move back north again. Um, not, not quite sure. Um, the models aren't really too confident on this yet, but the models are getting a good sense on the track, which is definitely good news. Now, here's another TC Genesis probability map. Again, NCP, FNMOC, and the gem model. Uh, for the first system, this particular one actually gives it an 80 to 90% chance to develop, and, and the second system behind that, maybe a 50 to 60% chance of development. All right. And finally, some other ensemble probabilities actually give the first system a 100% chance to develop and move it in this direction, then the second system a 30% chance and also moving in a similar direction. So double trouble for the Northern Caribbean islands. All right. I mean, it's certainly possible. Luckily, these systems might be steered between the Caribbean and Bermuda, but it's important to stay to keep you here to weather do for updates because you never know. These could change. Model tracks can definitely change very quickly. The intensity could change very quickly. So keep you here for updates. Don't forget to check out the community tab. Uh, leave a like on the post, please. And thank you guys for watching today's video. Uh, I'm The Weather Dude, signing off till next time, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.